Iran, it has been obligatory for women to wear a headscarf or hijab since 1983 in the wake of the 1979 revolution. Since then, women have been forced to wear the long, loose-fitting chador and the hijab to make sure the law is respected. Morality police patrol the streets. But two major online movements are showing people inside and outside the country that Iranian women want to choose. The movements are known as hashtag my stealthy freedom and hashtag white Wednesdays. The women in the videos are not necessarily opposed to wearing the hijab, but they are opposed to being forced by law to wear it. And they are willing to risk everything for the right to choose. Birth of the movement's Massey Alan Ajat, an Iranian journalist now living in exile in the United States, is the woman behind these two movements. In 2014, she had posted a photo of herself running down a street in London with her hair flying in the wind. Beneath the photo she wrote, Every time when I run in a free country and I feel the wind in my hair, it reminds me of the time when my hair is like a hostage in the hands of the Iranian government. That message connected with many Iranian women across the country. Soon Alan Ajad posted another photo of herself driving unveiled in Iran. This time she added the caption, I am a woman and I know there are many other women in Iran who do not believe in hijab and they have such pictures. Soon enough, I was bombarded by pictures and videos from women inside Iran unveiling themselves, walking in the streets taking pictures of themselves in the streets, in front of police cars or in the seaside or nature of explains Alan Ajad. And so the movement My Stealthy Freedom was born. To keep the momentum and the pressure on the Iranian government to end compulsory hijab, Alan Ajad says she decided to launch White Wednesdays last year on the 24th of May. White, because it's the color of peace. In this movement she asked the women to identify each other in public while taking of their white headscarves. Again. She got many videos of women, sometimes walking shoulder to shoulder with their husbands, their fathers, their boyfriends and saying no to compulsory hijab in public. Punishable crime in Iran Not wearing a hijab in Iran is a punishable crime. Women risk 10 months to 2 years in prison for being caught without being properly covered. Alan Ajad explains that from the young age of seven, girls are forced to wear the hijab. Without it, a girl will not be able to access school, to get a job, or just generally to live in the country. Because at all times you are being monitored by the morality police. In short, she says being a woman means that you leave in a dangerous situation in Iran. Obligation of the hijab in 1979. Iran deposed its shah and established a theocracy. Since then, the laws of the country have been tied directly to Islamic law or Sharia. It's the job of the top religious cleric, the supreme leader, to ensure the government's interpretation of Islam is respected, particularly by women. Quran and Islam The main beliefs come directly from the Quran, the holy book. For Muslims, the word of God was dictated directly to the Prophet Muhammad. Religious leaders point to its verses to explain why Muslims have to behave in a particular way. Merrill Wynn Davies is an Islamic scholar and former director of the Muslim Institute in London. She says that although there are eight references to the hijab in the Quran, none of them have anything to do with clothing or refer to terms that one would understand to be a hijab, a tador, or an abaya. The verse that many point to as a reference for the hijab is in chapter 24, 
verse 31 which calls upon women to lower their gaze and be mindful of their chastity and to draw their head coverings over their bosoms. But, stresses Davies, the passage actually begins in chapter 24 verse 30 where it calls upon men to lower their gaze and be mindful of their chastity. The conclusion taken from this, she explains, is that the Quran is speaking about modesty within a person, and less about uniforms and pieces of cloth which reduce both men and women to objects based on appearances. Hadith Another major source for Muslims is the Hadith, a record of the sayings and life of the Prophet Muhammad. The Hadith is debatable territory, adds Davies as it opens up room for interpretation, rather than it dictating specifics. It's for that reason she believes if you were to sit down a group of Muslim and Islamic scholars and ask them if it is obligatory for women to cover their hair, they will tell you, well actually, not. In the case of Iran, the religious clerics have interpreted the Quran to include this obligation on women. It has also been extended to women not being allowed to be a judge, to ride a bicycle, to sing solo, to travel abroad, or get a passport without permission from their husbands or fathers, explains Alan Ajad. And to the Iranian government, says Alan Ajad, these rules come from Sharia and must be respected. In response to such rules, which are only enforced mainly in Iran and Saudi Arabia, the creator of the movement says if there is an overriding interpretation of such laws then this is their responsibility to condemn anything that is happening in the name of Sharia laws and Islamic laws inside Iran and other Islamic countries. Davies stresses that the Quran is about helping a person make the world a better place and not about how you lead narrow, prescriptive lives and think you're going to get to heaven. Momentum of online movement until such overriding authority is removed, women have started to speak up. A similar online media movement has pushed certain boundaries already in Saudi Arabia such as the right to drive. And this current movement in Iran continues to gain momentum, despite the risks. Already one activist in March was sentenced to two years in prison for protesting without her hijab. But as Alan Ajad highlights, the surge in women risking everything for change has forced the Iranian government to take notice. For 40 years they were just the people of Iran, especially the women that had the fear inside their hearts. But now it is the government that fears its own people, especially the women of Iran. Thank you for listening to my channel. Please subscribe for get hot news in the world.